Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Circle Podcast. I'm your host, Taryn Armstrong, and with me today is David Bloomberg. How you doing, David? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Very excited to be talking about the final four episodes of The Circle U.S., In this podcast, we will be talking about episode nine, the first of the final four, which is episode nine, which is a lot of numbers. But I hope you I hope you're with me. I'm with you. I'm with you. I I kept up. All right. Perfect. So we're here. We're going to talk about it all. And uh, it's it's going to be an interesting day. So (laughs) let's get started. Uh, We open up the episode. We come right back where we left off. Sean is about to drop the picture of who she really is. And uh, and, and b- just before I even know it, the picture's there. They're reacting to it. I was like, whoa, whiplash. Like, uh, some. But I mean, I, I talked about this last week that <clears throat> I felt like this, like there wasn't much buildup emotionally to this reveal. I don't even really know who Sean is. Um, and so between that and the week long cliffhanger, this really just did not land for me emotionally. I was just like, okay, okay, this is happening. Yeah, I actually uh, forgot that she didn't reveal it already. Yeah. Uh, just in my mind, she had already done that. And so when the, the episode started up and she did it then, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess we haven't seen that yet. Right. Yeah. So she drops the picture. It's like, whoa. Um, and she says, everything I told you about myself was true. It's just a different picture. And in my head, I'm like, what did you tell them about yourself? Because I don't yeah. remember any of this conversation. <laughs> I don't think yeah, we yeah, saw I, them. I, I think that, uh, you know, on... Uh, when I talk about Survivor, when we talk about Survivor, we, we say we need more time with the contestants. And the circle is proving any reality show needs more time with the contestants, especially the ones who are new. And I even tweeted out uh, last week and said, you know, I, I like the originals. The others could come or go, and I, I don't care. I don't know anything about them. And you know, we got to know a little bit more about a couple of them this time. But otherwise, like you said, it was a big reveal. It was very emotional, except what is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, though, uh, we haven't really heard from you about uh, The Circle on any of these podcasts. How have you been feeling about the show as a whole uh, up until this point? I like it. I like it. I did not see the British versions. Mm -hmm. I was going to catch up and then poof, they disappeared from YouTube. Uh, And but yeah, I I enjoy it. There's less strategy so far than I expected. I thought there would be a lot more strategic uh, plotting and planning. Um, But the personalities are just so above and beyond that they kind of make up for that. But even in this case, like Sean's, I know that Rob had talked about how he thinks that she came in with this plan. I I don't. But if she did, then I want to see her telling us that she did. This is all part of my strategy. I came in late. I have to find a way to make a connection. This is my way. Yeah, that's and that's a good point, because I think that there probably is more strategizing going on than we're actually seeing. Uh, But this the the same uh, company that made the UK version is is making this version. And in the UK, they are very sort of like, ooh, strategy, that's. We don't like that. Um, And so I think that they're not really used to showing a lot of in-depth strategy. In fact, uh, in one of the UK seasons, there was an alliance that kind of formed that they kind of just edited around. uh, Like, uh, oh, these people just happen to be sticking together. And like you'd get an occasional bit of like, oh, yeah, we're sticking together. But they didn't explicitly show it because they don't. I I feel like that's they're just they don't really like that sort of thing. They don't like to show it explicitly. Maybe it makes the outcome too obvious if they know if you know that there's a bunch of people sticking together. But it does seem to be their uh, their sort of M.O. here. Um, And I I, I'm with you. I would like to see more of it. I would like to see more of the strategizing um, and, you know, some of the, the 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 machinations going on behind the scenes. Yeah. And I understand they don't want to give it away. That happens you know, on Survivor, but, you know, also. Uh, But, I mean, they pretty much already did give away a lot of it with 
the 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 chat that was had at the end of last time, which was all the originals except for Rebecca, mm -hmm. and them sticking together, and you know, I pretty well knew how this episode was going to go. Yeah, and and that's and that's what I talked about last week, where I feel like the next few episodes is, are mostly going to be uh, just a, a bunch of the new people like leaving one after another, um, both between the fact that it seems like the originals are mostly sticking together and the fact that uh, we barely know uh, these new people the in the editing. Like, it seems like they haven't really bothered uh, with with any of them. Um, and so uh, that's that seems to be uh, how we're and so. So Sean is revealing her true mm -hmm. self. It's uh, it seems like an emotional moment, but it's it's not landing with me at least. Uh, just because again, I just I don't like I I don't even know how long Sean has been there. Uh, like right. it feels to me like she just got there and is like, actually never mind. It's not that one. It's this one. And and so people are oh, but I don't know. Maybe she was there for like days. I I, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean it. It feels like two to three days tops um but i mean maybe it was more but at least as the show is presenting it to us because they show day and night and sleeping and everything it seemed like two to three days which is an awful fast time to feel so guilty and have this emotional breakthrough that they you know she needed to tell them Mm -hmm. which I guess does kind of go back to Rob thinking it was a strategy. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and I think as a strategy, it's actually not a bad one. Um, and, and we'll talk about how I, I do think it kind of worked to a degree. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm still with you, actually. I don't think it was an intentional strategy going in. I think that, uh, I don't know, I feel like... She, I think she cares more about the message that she's trying to send. And I don't know if, if that going in this way sends that message in the best way that, you know, uh, I, I feel like uh, going in and being proud would have been like, this is what I want to do to show my message. Um, I feel like she went in thinking, I'm going to play the game a little bit this way. It didn't really work out for her. It conflicted with her morals. And so she was like, ah, never mind. I want to go. I want to send my message. I don't want to be me. Uh, that just feels more right to me. Yeah. If if she had wanted to, you know, stand up for plus size people, then I think she should have done it coming in as herself. Now, I understand what she's saying, that people make first impressions, especially on social media. And I think a lot of, there's been a number of times in the season so far where people are thinking of it as social media and forgetting it's a game. And so, yes, people do make you know snap judgments on social media, but this is also a game. And I don't think people were going to gang up on her and throw her out just because uh, she she came in and she used plus size, uh, just like if you know uh, Tammy had come in instead of Ed. I don't think they would have thrown her out just because she was older. I, if if she had said the things that she wanted to say that Ed overruled, then they would have thrown her out. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, and they may still. Uh, but she's so useless. It, you, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and I know we're we're skipping ahead a little bit here, but I, everything that she said. You know, Ed just shakes his head and says, no, no, I, I can't say that, which I envision my own kids saying that to me. Now, I would not be that useless. I know what an emoji is, not an emojo, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, why she's there, that she's supposedly the brains of this operation <laughs> is no, just no. Not the brains nor the face. I right. don't know. It's just really just uh, just like a voice on his shoulder. Uh, we'll get to it, though. Yeah. Um, so alert. It's ratings time right away. <laughs> uh, and this episode is really just like, uh, all right, we've got too many people. Let's get right. some of the out of here. Right. Um, so right away, we're going to get to the ratings. Um, and we're going to see we're going to get a, a, a decent sense of where people are at here. Um, Adam uh, is going to put Shuby at number three. He was tempted to put Shuby last because uh, Shuby's been an influencer so often, but Shuby voted to save him the right. last night. So maybe he should feel comfortable with Shuby. He says, maybe I'll, maybe I'll regret this, but he's going to put Shuby in and uh, putting Shuby in 
wasn't a bad idea for Adam, uh, even though, spoiler alert, does not turn out super well. Um, it turns out the worst decision was uh, putting Rebecca at number one. Uh, he says, Rebecca's my girl in this house. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I can trust her. Uh, not, not the case. Not the case. No. Because Rebecca just had a nice moment with Sean. Yeah, and I think also, you know, he he uh, would later admit that his game is rock bottom when it comes to flirting. I also think in judging how well his flirting was going, it was rock bottom as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Shuby is going to go and put Adam at number five. Uh, he says <clears throat> he's opened up and been honest. So I think that we can pretty much intuit from there that for Shuby, it's something along the lines of Joey, Rebecca, Sammy, Chris, all of the originals, then the yeah. new people at the bottom with Adam as the first of the new people, then probably, I don't know, Bill, Sean in some order. Right. Um so then we get from Bill that he has Sean at number one. And I was like, whoa, I don't know if I've ever seen them interact uh, at all. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think so. He says, I'm ready to show my love and put my trust into her. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, in all fairness, uh, did we see Bill interact with just about anyone? I mean, I saw him interact with the bros once. Right. I, he I led mean, the he led the trivia team. Yeah, he, I, I, he called Adam too nice. Yeah, and that was about it. And yeah. you know, I barely even remember those. He's just such a forgettable person, at least on the show. Right, and and, and here's the thing too, and we'll talk more about Bill. But like, yeah. I feel like he did have a personality and and could have been interesting. We just didn't see any of it. He was barely there. Um, so Bill has Sean at number one. I have no idea where he puts anybody else because uh, we didn't see any of it. Uh, Sean puts Bill at number two. There's apparently some bond there. They were new yeah. together. Uh, you know, something happened. Um, and Sean puts Chris at number one as the first person she really opened up to. So right. uh, that's not super surprising. Uh, then we get from Chris. He puts Sean at number four, uh, which to me says that uh, that he has, you know, probably Shuby, Joey and Sammy as one, two and three in some order. And he has Rebecca below Sean uh, somewhere. He's not he's not been super close with Rebecca uh, uh, mm -hmm. to this point. Um, he also says about Joey, I don't know where he placed him, but he said about Joey, uh, he's proved He's a real ass bitch in a fake ass world. <laughs> he saved my ass last night. Always got to have a, a line for something. Uh, and yeah, you know, it, it, uh, it makes sense. Uh, those rankings from him. Yeah, there's a lot of reciprocity in terms of influencers, quote unquote, saving uh, other players in this version of the circle, um, especially when in the last round, Shuby and uh, Joey had to do it publicly. And so having somebody say your name and be like, I am saving this person right. really got some loyalty, I think, from uh, from those people. So um, Joey is 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 good in Chris's book. Yeah, and that one was truly saving. You are picking that person and saying you are safe, as opposed to before when it was debating the pros and cons and saying, well, you know, we'll, we'll go with this person. And it wasn't necessarily saving someone as much as it was getting rid of someone else. In this case, it was literally, yes, I save you. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting, like the way that it's worded and the way that it plays out, you know, it's it's really they were saving everybody except for one person. Right. And so you're going to like everybody left was saved. So it's like you can't really feel that much loyalty. But the way it's worded, it makes you feel like you should have some loyalty. Right. Right. Uh, it's really meaningful if it's like you can save one person. Like, OK, then you feel like, OK, this person's looking out for me. Right. Um, but uh, but, you know. Chris is feeling good about Joey. Joey still feels good about Chris. He puts Chris at number three. Uh, again, I imagine this means Shuby's number one, Sammy number two, Chris there at number three. Um, not sure where he stands on, you know, Rebecca. Uh, it, it, Rebecca was not involved in the conversation with the OGs sticking together, and she does seem to be pretty low on Joey and Chris's priority list, or Chris at the very least. Not sure where she stands with Joey. Um, 
but uh, but it seems like that wasn't in a mission that was unintentional. It seems like there are a couple people in that group that don't feel super close to Rebecca, even though Shuby and Sammy both really do. Um, and so Sammy, we'll see, puts Rebecca at uh, at number two, and uh, and uh, Joe um, Shuby, of course, is gonna you know put her high. I don't think we saw uh, exactly where, but uh, but Shuby obviously still feels very good about uh, about Rebecca. Yeah, I wondered if she was left off because they were limited in the number of people they were allowed to have in that particular chat. Because Shuby brought up Rebecca, mm -hmm. and then when they were saving people, when Shuby saved Rebecca first, Joey was over there saying, yes, yeah, save Rebecca, save Rebecca. Yeah. So I, I, that just made me wonder, were they limited in the number of people in that chat? Was that the reason that she was left out? It's it's very possible, um, you know, it, maybe that was it wasn't intended to be a chat where they all came together and agreed. And then when it became that, it was like, well, right. well, we'll include Rebecca, even though she doesn't happen to be in this conversation. Yeah. Um, so uh, so Joey puts Chris at number three. Sammy puts Rebecca at number two. Sammy puts Joey at number one. He saved her last night and she can't thank him enough. So this relationship with Joey has really blossomed for Sammy. And she also feels very grateful to Joey for saving her the night before. Um, so there you go. People, everybody felt grateful if they were saved. So that was a really, that was a really actually like a really good way to be an influencer is to have to publicly name the people you're saving uh, because it basically means that half of the, the people right. left in the game now feel indebted to you. And yet Joey, well, you know, spoiler, Joey didn't make it back again. Yes, uh, which I, I think that that likely stems from the fact that it's not really half of the people left right. because there were many people that weren't involved in the uh, in the thing, um, including, of course, uh, Bill and Sean and right. and Ed, who's not rating this time. Right. But two whole people is is a lot. Yeah. Um, so then we get uh, Rebecca puts Sammy at number two. He adores her to pieces and she's earned that spot. So uh, the Rebecca Sammy relationship seems to have really developed and they really bonded over Sean uh, coming out to them as the real Sean. Right. And they both seem to respond well to it. And that kind of helped them bond with each other. Um, so immediately, no in between. We're getting right to the ratings results. And the lowest person is insta blocked. Yes. Just and right I, away. And, and I immediately knew who it was going to be. Yeah, <laughs> well, pretty good idea. There, I, I, I think there was a chance uh, between the final two, uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it. But number one, Rebecca, finally up from third yep. place. Um, bonding with uh, with Sean, I, I imagine, must have, uh, or bonding with, uh, with Sammy via Sean must have helped. Um, being one of the people that Sean chose, Rebecca was likely up there in, uh, in mm -hmm. Sean's rankings. Um, so... Uh, and then, of course, just, you know, having uh, the other OGs probably put her at least in the top four, if not five in Chris's uh, case. Uh, right. Finally got Rebecca up to first place uh, and Seaburn's very happy about it. Um, and then Shuby there at number two. So Shuby once again for this is the fourth time in a row, I think. Uh, at is least, yeah. Yes, in the top two, uh, followed by Chris at number three. He has risen a bit with this OG alliance. And, and unsurprisingly, all of the OGs uh, are one, right. two, three, four, five, as Joey is number four and Sammy is number five, the least popular of the OGs. Yeah, she. Uh, if she's looking at that uh, from a game perspective, she might not be very comfortable right now. Yeah. And and I think I think this partly has to do with the fact that Sammy has a bit of a harder shell than the others. Mm -hmm. And so she's really she's opened up and she's lowered her defenses with the OGs. But uh, to the new players, uh, perhaps um, there's a, a little bit more of a, of a difficulty breaking in still. And they probably put her lower. That would be my uh, theory as to why she was uh, down there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's possible that, you know, some of the OGs did the same. Um, but I, I definitely think that the, the new people rated her lower. Mm -hmm. 
So then number six is going to be Sean. And this definitely feels very much a direct result of oh, yeah. the reveal that uh, how are you going to put Sean below the other new people when she just like came out and, and was very vulnerable with you? It feels like a betrayal to do that. So uh, I think that automatically Rebecca, Sammy and Chris were going to feel uh, indebted. I think Chris would have put her high anyway. Um, but Sammy and Rebecca, who didn't seemingly didn't know her very well beforehand, I think definitely felt a lot more uh that that it was a lot more important to put uh sean just a little bit higher than some of these other people yeah and uh you know again that was fairly predictable as a result of what she did and she couldn't you know break into the top five by any means especially since she only had conversations with the three but yeah definitely higher than bill and adam mm -hmm. uh so then the final two the bottom two Adam and Bill, which we're going to be. And so I was immediately, I was thinking, like, obviously this is going to be Bill. But then we got right. to the very bottom and I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe it could be Adam because Bill got a number two from Sean. And I bet Adam got no mm. high rankings from anybody. Um, but not the case. Adam is going to squeeze by and Bill is going to be out. I imagine here that Adam was just overall just a couple of spots higher on everybody's mm -hmm. list. And that did barely managed to counteract the fact that Bill did manage to get a number two from Sean. Uh, and so that's it for Bill. He's out, just insta-blocked. Yep. And I got to say, I was kind of rooting for Adam to stay here, weirdly. Bill seemed like, he seems like a good dude, but I I just, Adam's such a train wreck. I just wanted to keep watching. Yeah, and, you know, it's hard to root for Bill because we don't know Bill, like yeah. we talked about. It's like, okay, we don't know who you are. You're you're practically brand new, and you're, as someone else put it, you know, generic generic white guy. And so, okay, I just think he couldn't break through in that amount of time. Whereas at least Adam had a little time, made a couple of breakthroughs here and there. Yeah, and uh, Bill is not pleased. He's, 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 no. Oh, sh I should have been more fake. I was being genuine. I was trying to make real connections, but all these people are fake. Uh, and this is why I feel like there's a personality there. Like there was, there's a character here that could have been interesting, I think, if he had lasted more than, I don't know, a couple of hours. I don't know how long he's in the house. Uh, but uh, but we just, he just didn't didn't have a, a chance to see it. But he, he is all about like, oh, everyone was fake. That's the only reason I didn't succeed. Um, and I don't know, this this uh, this had me thinking because there's definitely a lot of fakeness in the circle. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like the idea that, oh, I, I needed to be more fake. I was too genuine and therefore not nice enough. Like these people are being all fake nice and I'm too real. Why isn't you being real nicer then is my question. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he went on about, what do you say, authentic relationships. You know, I was doing authentic relationship building and that doesn't work. Well, not when you're in the house for or the apartment building for a day or two or whatever. They all had time and he didn't. He mm. was, you know, if he had come in as one of the originals, maybe we, we don't really know. We don't know enough about him or how he interacted. But certainly authentic relationship building in a situation where, you know, that he found himself in, it takes time. And you're trying to break in to the authentic relationships that are already there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's it, I, you're always look, Bill, there was nothing you could have done. <laughs> right. Um, you could you could have gone in as a catfish and then revealed that you weren't um, and maybe that would have saved you for a round or two but uh, but apart from that like there's there's probably nothing you could have done uh, but but also just like I, I reject the idea that being genuine requires not being nice uh, like or that like it's somehow a character uh, like it's, it's it's like a good thing that uh, that you're sometimes a little bit mean to people because that means you're more genuine like you, you can if it's it's not about like just because some people are fake nice does not mean that you need to be the opposite of that which is like fake mean or just 
mean like you can just be genuinely nice and not make people feel bad uh that's not being fake that's just being a good person i don't know that's just how i feel yeah it almost it was almost like he was insulting himself like i'm not right. nice enough but my authentic self is not nice enough so i needed to be nicer well maybe you could just be nicer in real life you know yeah, because uh, like what he's talking about is like he came after Adam for being like too nice. Right. Um, and, you know, th like he like he was attacking somebody like there's just like there's nicer ways to go about doing that. I don't know. I'll, 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 yeah. That's it for Bill. <laughs> um, so uh -oh. you've now talked about Bill more than he was on the show. I so. probably yeah. the but but hold on. The blocking is not over. Shuby was happy that he didn't have to actually send anybody mm. home. But that is, that is not the case because Shuby and Rebecca are now influencers and must block a second player. It's a double blocking. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, we transition into the to the usual for Shuby. You know, he's he's so used to it by now. But of course, this was all brand new for uh, Rebecca. Or yes. Seaburn. So they go up to the influencer hangout. Uh, Rebecca says, oh, this is how the other side lives. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, in the at-risk hangout, uh, Chris says to himself, if Rebecca and Shuby were being strategic, that he'd be getting the block because he's in third right below them. Uh, that's a, That was a little surprising to hear from Chris. I, I, I'm, I'm still just not sure where he stands on, like, is he somebody that's playing the game based on relationships or is he being strategic or is it a mix of both? I'm still not entirely sure. He definitely sees the strategic game. He's thinking right. about like, oh, if they're being strategic, this might happen to me. But I feel like there is maybe a little bit of disdain for it. And he does seem to be playing based on who he likes the most for the most part. So um, I'm still just trying to figure it out because basically, you know, we're going to get to a point where uh, it's it's in the finals and we have have to figure out are people going to make the final rankings based on strategy meaning i'm going to put the people i think are most likely to win at the bottom and the people who are least likely to win at the top which gives me the best chance to win or are they going to rank based on genuine connection and relationship and loyalty meaning i don't care who's most likely to win i'm just going to put my favorite people at the top and my least favorite people at the bottom um and everybody comes into that final ranking with a different mindset. And so trying to figure out which way people will, uh, you know, go at the rankings is, is important if you're playing the game and interesting if you're watching. Yeah, I, I feel like Chris does know the strategy, understand that there's strategy. He definitely, you know, has some emotional rankings as well, but he seems to understand it better than many of the others. And it, it will be interesting to see because, of course, you know, Shuby, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about later, seems to be one big emotional mess, and, which I would not have expected from him. I thought he was going to be the strategist coming in here. Yeah. And uh, at least so far, that has not been the case. Uh, but it is interesting that at least we got to hear from Chris a little bit that, yes, there is strategy in this game, but like nobody's used it so far basically yeah uh you know just it's just, it's been a lot of like bonding and, and loyalty and alliances um not a lot of like underhanded betrayal uh or any sort of like next level sort of strategy you know should be brought it up the like oh maybe we should keep mercedes around right. as a shield but ultimately didn't go through with it um and just went for a more straightforward uh game which which might be the best way to play the circle to be uh, just a little more straightforward because if you try to get a little too fancy with it might not work out for you because the game is really based a lot on like genuine connection and and, and feeling right. so it's in it's definitely interesting um so Rebecca and Shuby, they've got to discuss. Um, right away, they're gonna they're gonna cycle right through. Uh, Chris, he's great. He's positive. He's wonderful. Joey, honest and direct. He take a bullet for us. Not Chris. Uh, not Joey. Um, Sammy, she's a genuine person. Her heart is solid gold. We're not taking out any of the OGs. Literally solid gold. <laughs> yes. Um, so it comes down to Adam or Sean. And uh, and it's very clear that Shuby wants to keep Adam. Right. Um, and so he's going to open. He says, uh, you know, pr uh, or sorry, uh, Rebecca's going to open, says, Adam, he's pros. 
He's 100% genuine. Cut to Alex sitting there. Uh, Cons. He tries to use the fact that Rebecca feels for him to his advantage. Uh, And so all of this was wrong. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right? All of this was fake. Um, Shuby responds, well, my first impression was that he was just a, a, a flirty guy trying to, like, manipulate people. But I had, a, I had a heart-to-heart with him. He does have real feelings for you, Rebecca. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's genuine. Um, and and Seaburn's sitting there like, oh, my moral compass is yes. just, oh, man. Uh, and it's, what, a, what a complicated mess this whole situation is. There are two catfish who are pretending to be in a relationship which started out fake but is now genuine uh and so and but now so now seaburn is trying to figure out does should rebecca block this catfish relationship or uh or block the other catfish who came out as not a catfish um and it's it's a uh, and, and meanwhile you know you've got you've got shuby there who thinks rebecca's real and thinks right. this relationship is real and genuine oh boy this gets real complicated real quick yeah, Shuby thinks that everyone is real, and therefore, whenever he finds out that someone isn't, he like takes it as a dagger to the heart. Oh no! Yeah. Why? Why? Why would you? Why would you? If you have a 50, 50 uh, decision in front of you, why would you choose one instead of the other right. when the point of the game is that some people choose the other? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand it. And, and that was also about the look on his face when uh, Rebecca brought up and talked about how real Sean was and there were no cons for Sean. Yes. And he was like, what? what? Rebecca what says, Sean is brave, honest, and beautiful. No cons. She was like, what? Yeah. I was not expecting that. So Shuby, Shuby goes in again like, well, I just want to remind you that Adam's feelings for you are authentic and genuine. <laughs> But look, I don't know Sean enough, so look, the decision is in your hand. I just want to say that, I mean, he basically loves you. I mean, I just just making sure you know that that's real and authentic, but the decision is yours. That's right. In those four days that you have had together, well, not together, apart together, he has fallen madly in love with you. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, you know, Shuby was technically giving this decision to uh, to Rebecca, but I think that he really was anticipating that Rebecca would choose to keep Adam. uh, But Rebecca does not choose to keep Adam. She chooses to get rid of Adam and keep Sean. And strategically, I do think this was a pretty big blunder. Um, Now, Adam put Rebecca at number one. Uh, Adam's the reason Rebecca was an influencer here. Uh, this fake relationship of theirs was fake, but it it would have lasted into you know whatever. Uh, you know if if for some reason Rebecca is able to get Adam into the finals, that's a, that's a person on her side. Uh, if not, then at least it keeps her safe until the finals. Something along those lines. Um, not to mention the fact that Rebecca has been playing up. This, I'm just so in love. It's this is the most beautiful time of my life. I my heart is a flutter. Oh no, I'm blocking him. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's 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 out of character a little bit, and it doesn't feel right. Uh. And. I, do, I, it's, I feel like this is just bad all around. I think Shuby was weirded out. He's like, why? I don't understand why she chose to keep Sean. Um, and, you know, maybe he'll understand when when Rebecca can finally reveal like, oh, well, Sean had told me that she was a catfish right. and, you know, came out. And so I didn't feel like I could. But but still, I feel like I don't know if that's going to that's going to really cut it. Like th- this supposed relationship was you know really hyped up by her uh to then let let her go uh or let let him go over sean who seemingly they don't know very well um and and shuby clearly wanted it to go then another way um and then we'll talk about like that so so rebecca's gonna block adam and then play it up like oh i'm so sad about this um like (laughs) it's uh I, I didn't i didn't love it i didn't love it but uh but that's it adam is gone 
Yeah, and I, did, I didn't like it at all either. It really seemed like Seaburn was doing the thing that, uh, you know, I always talk about not doing, which is don't let your emotions control you. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that he had he had these feelings for what Sean did. And it just wouldn't allow him to overcome that. And I, I think he just, you know, it goes back to the moral compass thing. He felt so terrible with the idea of blocking her after she came clean that he just couldn't do it. And, you know, instead he got rid of someone who was an ally in the game. Yeah. And he also points out, he says to to us that, you know, I've got to send Adam home because he's starting to fall for the mask that is Rebecca. It <laughs> seems like that the when Shuby tells him that the feelings are genuine, that almost pushes him even more toward right. wanting Adam out because he's worried that like he's I don't know like going too far with it like if this person has genuine feelings for my catfish then is this is that too far and i don't want to keep pushing that maybe i should just cut it off uh before it goes too far um but uh but yeah i'm obviously uh it it wasn't real so um it could have gone much further who 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 cares Yeah, and again, another emotional decision. You know, mm-hmm. he, the, both sides of it were an emotional decision on his part. Because if you're going in to catfish as a woman, and you make relationships with people which will help you in the game, you can't cut it off and say, "Oh, well, his his feelings for me are too real." No, that's the whole point. Yeah, uh, I also just. <laughs> When when the when they're dragging the decision, one of this one of the hardest decisions of my entire life. I'm heartbroken. Um, Joey is yeah. like, it's me. <laughs> there, I cannot envision a scenario where this is not me getting blocked right now. Like, this is Shuby and Rebecca. Why do you expect <laughs> to be blocked, Joey? Yeah, I I was thinking the same thing as he was going on. I'm like, yours is the last name that is going to. <laughs> to be on their lips here. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I almost felt like, did, you know, did the editors take that clip from a different situation? <laughs> because I can't imagine how he's thinking. Like I, I get being paranoid, but going as far as to say, there's no way it's not me. Right. <laughs> that's, that's some extreme paranoia, Joey. <laughs> um, so, uh, so ultimately here it is. Adam's going home. He just, he yells, ah, <laughs> well, you know, uh, he he might as well go home anyway because he finished off his pudding earlier. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he can meet one player, uh, but uh, but Bill can't, I guess. Yeah, I, I I don't know if Bill met someone and it was just like, so dull that they yeah, didn't bother to show it. I feel like he probably he probably just like went. Uh, Maybe no, Sean. Since no, they you know had what that... though? If he went, if he met Sean, I feel like they might have shown it because oh, it was a catfish situation. So maybe I don't know. Maybe he just met like Joey or something, and it was like, "Hey, bro, sucks." I, I mean, or maybe it was, and that maybe it was Sean, and that was part of what made him so upset with his message about being authentic. That's that's p- totally possible too. Um, they didn't want to show that they uh, really they let another person out of cafe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who knows? Maybe he ne- maybe he didn't see anybody. Who knows? Right. He was uh, so mad at them all. He. I mean, they always say they can meet someone. Maybe he was like, to heck with them all. I I don't want to deal with any of these people ever again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Adam, he can meet one player. And now I've talked about this before that the catfish are less likely to go for a confrontational meeting because right. they don't really have as much of a leg yeah. to stand on. But uh, so I wasn't entirely sure that Adam would go to Rebecca, but it was like, who else is he going to see? Yeah. Um, like there was nobody else that he had much of it. Maybe Shuby, but uh, but if you're going to go with Shuby, that's kind of a confrontation anyway. So you might as well just go with Rebecca. Uh, and that is what he decides to do. He says, though, first he needs to change so he looks like his best self. Yeah. <laughs> so he changes into some tie dye and overalls. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, well. That is his best self there based on what we saw him walk in, you know, wearing. Uh, he, I mean, he did not wear the trousers that he came in with. But uh, but right. apart from that, 
Yeah. I almost wore tie dye just to, uh, you know, honor him, but I, I don't have overalls to go with it. This is a great uh, meeting scene though, as Adam, uh, it's Alex now walks in right. um, and uh, Seaburn just goes, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Seaborn hasn't uh, met anybody yet, right? right like, this is his right. first time being exposed. And so he's really just standing there like, oh, man. Yeah, it made it a lot easier for him that Adam was Alex. Could Adam you imagine been, yeah. if Adam was really Adam and really oh. did have feelings and this big Adam dude <laughs> walks in? That would have been a nightmare for Seaborn. That would have been fun. It would have been fun for us, yeah. yeah. Um, and so Adam also is like being a little creeper, like tiptoeing around, yeah. like slowly, like walking in, and then finally they they see each other and uh, they they explode. And you know something that Tim has been talking about is that he feels like uh, Seaburn's mannerisms over the course of the show have gotten like more feminine because he's playing a female yes. character. And I, I, I haven't really seen it like Tim has, but when uh, Seaburn interacts with Alex, I did all of a sudden, I was like, he seems more masculine to me. Like he's standing yeah. up a little bit straighter. He just feels more like a dude right now than I feel like I normally see him. Uh, I, I don't know if that if Tim got in my head or, or, or what, but, um, but I do feel like the mannerisms do slightly change as, as Seaburn now feels like he's being a bit more of himself uh, in front of somebody. Yeah, I do agree with Tim. It is like your your role playing mm -hmm. and I, you may have said this too like if you're if you're in a role playing game and you take on the mannerisms i think he does that even though he's by himself yeah it's interesting it's really interesting uh he says uh to alex yo yo rebecca's my girlfriend yeah <laughs> And Alex is like, you're doing what I wish I could have done. Um, and uh, they have they have a conversation. Now, Seaburn says that he was trying to flirt like Rebecca would. And so I feel like may maybe Rebecca, I feel like I'm starting to get the picture here. Um, I don't know how many relationships Seaburn has been in, how, mu how much flirting he has done in his life. But if... Like, he seems pretty young. If Rebecca's, like, one of his first girlfriends mm -hmm. and, like, his only experience is flirting with her and they're in, like, a long-term relationship, then maybe that's why he is so dramatic in his flirting because he's only used to Rebecca, a, a right. woman who loves him, like, being really lovey-dovey with him and not, like, the sort of, like, uh, getting-to-know-you flirting that occurs with, uh, with like, the dating scene. Um, and so that's, uh, maybe maybe that's where this comes from. I feel like we're may maybe it starts to make a little more sense. Yeah, and, you know, no matter what, at least his flirting, uh, well, Rebecca's flirting, was better than Adam's flirting. Yeah. Which and and it of course makes sense for Alex, right. who has been with the same woman for eleven years, and uh, and I think went so he he also had the same intensity of like this is how flirting works because right. this is how it works in a relationship I've been in for eleven years, um, but then also this is what I think flirting works. Right. This is how I think flirting works for people who haven't been in a relationship for 11 years. And that includes uh, arousal and, uh, you know, adventurous romps. Yeah. And I, I, I also I think it's this is how flirting works for someone who looks like Adam does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they obviously just walk in a room and all the women flood to them. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it does seem like he has sort of a, a long held grudge mm -hmm. against good looking guys like oh, they get all the women even though they're the jerks you know mm -hmm. and so he just played it up that way yeah uh i loved that uh seaburn was like yeah yeah with sammy she uh she she told on you she's yeah she said that it was kind of it was pretty creepy the, yeah uh, the way you were doing <laughs> like, whoops yeah 
<laughs> um so uh so that's 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 it that's the uh the meat here um sean is gonna realize like i just probably saved myself with that reveal oh, uh yeah. who knows what would have happened and uh and sammy says to herself she feels like she needs to start opening up more uh coming fifth of the ogs that maybe right. she's not opening up enough and uh and that is something that you know we've commented on with sammy is that she does have that sort of harder exterior doesn't open up quite as much um so that was an interesting bit of introspection from her yeah. And then, you know, she I mean, she has opened up at times. We do mm -hmm. know that she's worked with autistic children, which she then talked about again. But I don't know that she's opened up to everyone in that way. Yes. Um, so that's uh, that's that. Next, we're going to see that uh, that Sean, the start of the next day, is is finally going to drop the real photos uh, for everyone that uh, she's going to change her whole profile, three new pictures. And man, I mean, we talked about how she got to send a, a photo, like a new photo in a private message. She got to change her whole profile. That's right. three whole new pictures. Um, like, uh, all right, all right, whatever. Um, and uh, but more importantly to me is uh, she also changed her relationship status to Taken. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Part. Yeah, I was busy looking at the other parts and uh, being thankful for her not choosing the one picture she brought up which had a sign you know and, and yes. something about the white house and i was like oh you better you know it's bad enough well not bad enough it's enough that you're changing your whole persona but to then throw a political message in there yeah. too that would that would have potentially killed the goodwill that she had earned i agree especially because the political message was about um like plus size mm -hmm. you know adv advocates like being a plus size advocate is one thing but i feel like if their first interaction with the real sean is a photo of her with like a, a pretty like pointed message yeah. uh which i believe was po you know pointed at, at trump in the in the photo right. um but like a pointed message i feel like they would have they would have been like, oh, was this whole thing a political stunt? Right. And are we the butt end of this joke where she's saying that we are the people who are judging her? Uh, like she's accusing us of having prejudged her. And now, like, you know, this is some sort of whole thing. Um, so I, I think it was definitely a good call to not include that one and go a little more of like the personal route of like, this is the real me. And, you know, I didn't feel comfortable. Uh, and so that that helps people feel more comfortable to be like, oh, no, no, you, you shouldn't have felt that. That way because we do accept you um and it's a much easier transition there um but uh but yeah first person to admit that you're in a relationship in the circle yeah there you go yeah and i you know i've been thinking about that and every once in a while someone will post a quiz or something like that like would you play as yourself or a catfish and like me being who i am i would i would have to play as myself and i think it would come off as fairly non-threatening because you're not out there trying to, you know, if you're already in a relationship, then your relationships with the people there are more authentic. It's not mm -hmm. all flirting and, you know, pushing to go on a date later and, and everything else. So it, it did surprise me that everyone came in as if they were single. Yeah. That's, it's it's I, I feel like it really says something about uh, the uh, the the culture here of, uh, of how people felt they needed to be uh, perceived heading into the house. But uh, there are some interesting reactions to Sean and her reveal here where a, a lot of them are like, oh, that's great. She's beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, I wish that she, you know, could have felt comfortable coming in on her own uh, or as herself. Um, Shuby, not not <laughs> as happy. Uh, but as we talked about before, it's uh, Ed's mom <laughs> who um, <laughs> is like, uh, I just, you should write confused, question mark, question mark, question yeah. mark. Um, <laughs> What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is she for? I, again, she, I, she's the brains of the operation, except she's like the negative brains. You know, she's the <clears throat> anti-brain of the operation. Yeah. And 
yep. stereotypically you would expect that ed is the the judgmental and it's, it right. does seem like they're both judgmental it's just that ed seems to have the presence of mind to not write confused yeah yeah he's just smart enough to see i mean he definitely is gaming you know he's, he's one person that we are seeing is gaming uh and you know, he's like, well, I don't agree with this, but I'm going to fire off a compliment because that's what I'm expected to do here. Yeah. Uh, Ed's mom, Ed's mom to me is a, a great representation of like the stereotypical like reality show <laughs> fan who is just like mean online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like she she is she is the person in my Twitter mentions who's like, uh, why did we need this podcast? Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I again, she's she's supposed to be the brains of the operation. And I, I guess she's just there. I mean, you know, casting had to see her and be like, oh, this will be great if she can convince him to use her stuff. It'll be more <laughs> dramatic. It'll be more fun. But Ed's over there like, whoa, whoa, stop. Yeah. Uh, Ed says, we're not writing that. We're going to continue yeah. to be fake and write compliments like everyone else. Yeah. Um, Shuby, though, Ooh. is uh, just a little uh, a little lukewarm on this. Um, he, he really doesn't like when people aren't themselves. Right. And so he says, you know, oh, this is great, but I do wish that you had felt comfortable coming in as yourself. Uh, and, and again, I'm just like, Shuby, this is the point of the show. If, if there weren't some people that came in as catfish, the whole premise of the show, or at least half the premise of the show, disappears. Uh, like, I, what, what do you want them to do? There's gonna be catfish there, man. Yeah, it's like the people who come into Survivor and say, well, I just want to create a friendly society. Yeah. Or I just want to save chickens <laughs> or you know, whatever else. I'm not here to play the game and win. And the funny thing is, Shuby could still win, you know, oh, yeah. even because he is the most authentic. But at some point, you know, he's he's being a little too authentic in thinking everyone else needs to be authentic. You know, I think that he said that the biggest risk anyone can take is to be yourself and let the world know it. Yeah. And it's kind of a it's kind of a compliment to Sean saying here you are being yourself, but it's also kind of a kind of a smack back at her. Like you should have come in this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like, it's, it's also like kind of weird because I think absolutely in the real world, he's hundred percent correct. Being yeah. yourself and being genuine is difficult. Uh, and, and it does take, uh, you know, a certain amount of, uh, bravery and strength to really just like be yourself, uh, unashamedly. Um, but in, in the game of the circle, being yourself is kind of the privileged position. It's kind right. of gives you uh, an advantage over the people who are playing as a catfish because they have a lot more work to do. Uh, and so it it just it doesn't quite work to sort of look down on those people as like, uh, well, you should have done it the way I did it because it's harder this way. It's a little easier that way in the circle, actually. Right. And you know, like I said, he is... He's he he's playing the game kind of without realizing he's playing the game and he's doing, you know, it within the top two or three of of the people who are remaining because he is being authentic. And I know I just keep saying that word, but he, he it, it's the only thing he thinks about mm -hmm. and it's working for him for now. And the question is, you know, three episodes from now. Is it still going to work for him or are other people going to start thinking this is a game? Shuby is too good. There's no way we can rate him the highest. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of like what we talked about with or what I talked about, at least with Bill, where it's like, uh, I don't know, like maybe this is Shuby being authentic. But I feel like regardless of your own personal feelings, like this particular moment is a time for empathy. Like this is a really difficult thing for Sean to do. And mm -hmm. you recognize that. And so, you know, accepting and being kind and welcoming, regardless of your own sort of personal, uh, you know, feelings about it is, I think, the right thing to do. And I don't think it's fake. I think it's just being empathetic and, and kind. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I do understand, you know, because sometimes... 
I could envision myself being in a similar situation of seeing some of these messages going back and just kind of rolling your eyes and being like, really, come on, we, we, do you really all feel that way? Which I think is basically what Ed says, you know, mm-hmm. at one point, uh, but you still got to do it in this situation. There are certain things, uh, you know, just like in real social media, if someone says something or does something and they've, they've bared their heart, even if you think, really, I can't believe that they're doing this. You don't say that online, Mm -hmm. you know? So that is the one, you know, one of the parts where the social media and the game aspect do really overlap. Yeah. And and because it's like, I think it can seem really cheesy and obvious and over Mm -hmm. the top when you see a bunch of people commenting on something where somebody's, you know, being open because to you sitting in your place of feeling comfortable, it is cheesy and over the top and maybe a little fake and whatever. But for the person who is feeling vulnerable in that moment, that's what they need. That's what they they need to they need those things to help them feel whole again and comfortable again so that they don't need more of the cheesy over the top whatevers. Uh, So and and to be like the cynical one in the backseat, like being like, "Ah, what is this? Come on, guys, let's be real about this. Like, uh, okay, come on. Um. Yeah. And if you're going to do that, keep it to yourself. Yeah. You know, like like Ed is doing. Um, but I mean, Shuby wasn't that wasn't too too bad here. I want to right. tell, like uh, this. Right. This is more of like Shuby sort of like making me go off on a tangent. Um, Shuby is is pretty cautious about this for the most part. Like this is great, you're great. Uh, I just wish that you could have come in as yourself. Right. Um, but but Sean does see that. The, uh, oh, Shuby seems like the person most affected by this, the most most cool about this whole thing. Um, and so uh so there there it is and this whole thing made me really because prior to this moment i was like shuby he's such a you know kind-hearted guy he's Mm -hmm. when rebecca reveals that he's actually seaburn it'll be like oh wow that's so funny oh i'm starting to get worried this is gonna be real awkward yeah and you know he just keeps talking about it and it's everyone needs to be authentic. Rebecca is my sister in this game. And when he meets Seaburn, Oh, it's going to be bad. And I have already seen online. Some people are really looking forward to it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Uh, all right. So, Bill is going to leave a message. He calls them all fake. Yeah. Uh, the OGs, they're not fa- they're not fans of that message. Oh, well, fake. We're not fake. What? Um, that's that's not true. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, again, like there is some there's some truth to it here. Right. Um, but uh, but what are you going to do? Adam also leaves a message and they are uh, all the draws are going to drop. I don't know why they're so surprised considering how bad bad he was at being a catfish uh he apologizes for the bad flirting and i will i will say i i kind of came around on adam by the end i was hoping he would stay a little longer because he was such a train wreck Mm -hmm. and when he learns from seaburn that his flirting was creepy he's kind of self-aware about it. he's like i'm sorry i was creepy i just, look i don't know what i'm doing i'm clear <laughs> i was clearly very bad at this i'm sorry uh i i liked that i liked the 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 humble sort of like all right that was i just really was terrible yeah i definitely liked his goodbye better uh you know than bill's and uh you know even shuby for bill said whatever bill <laughs> and yeah um like someone telling him to be authentic you know but yeah. And then, you know, it it shifted after uh, Adam's goodbye that Rebecca was suddenly getting all the sympathy. Right. And so, yeah. So, you know, he, he says, you know, so, sorry and, and all of that. And everybody's shocked. Oh, it's Adam. Um, Sean says, you know, I did feel like there was something off about the relationship between Adam and Rebecca. She said the relationship between the the whole Adam and Rebecca relationship just seemed too perfect. And in my head, I'm just like, wait, what? What what did this look like? So this was like, again, I don't know what the time scale is here, but apparently probably at least for a a few amount, uh, some amount of days, like this was a thing that they were in a full fledged 
quote unquote relationship that they were both like being lovey dovey about. And like, it was probably obvious to everyone that like something was off about this because it was really badly faked. And uh, I'm just like in my in my head canon about what was happening here in the circle. Uh, the, like they were just like really parading this relationship like a, like a new couple, uh, like being like, oh, look at us. We're perfect. We're the relationship in the circle. Here we go. Um, and, for like a long time before <laughs> so 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 that that's going on there and so then everybody's like oh how is how does rebecca feel about this oh my god what is this gonna be like and uh and immediately seaburn is like all right i'm gonna play the sympathy yeah. card and right away i was like oh no he's gonna go way too hard on this like the 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 right way to play this is to to be subtle about it to be like right. it's fine you know he came to see me and you know i'm i'm dealing with it it's it's you know it's it's what it is what it is um but of course it's he just goes way over the top here um and he's just like ah so adam came to see me and obviously my heart has been shattered i don't know how I'm going to survive, but these tears rolling down my face <laughs> are someday going to going to mean something. <laughs> it's just it's too much. It's too much. And Ed is sitting there like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, everyone else is like, you know, showering the sympathy and Ed's like, yeah, okay, whatever here. It broke me. It broke me. <laughs> um, and Sh I mean, Shuby's eating it, eating it up. Oh, it was right. so wrong of Adam to play with Rebecca's emotions while playing as somebody else. And again, I'm like, oh, Rebecca's yeah. in so much trouble. Um, but it did seem like for the people that knew Rebecca, this was this was working to a degree. Uh, and it was only really obvious to uh, to Ed, who was sitting there like this just screams fake to me, which tends to be how it works. Like. The new people, and this this is true for the circle. It's true for Big Brother. Uh, when new people are added to the game, um, or people that haven't been a part of the game for a while come back, they usually have a better view of where people actually lie and who's genuine and who's not than the people who have been there the whole time, uh, because they have an outside perspective. They're not like locked into this sort of like uh, baggage of like, oh well, I've known Rebecca. We saw how she reacted to Sean and all of that stuff. So, um, so Ed seems to have the right read on this uh but but again it's just seaburn continues to be way, way too much here i think yeah and i think you know i think you hit the nail on the head that ed is coming in there blind to everything else that's happened and he sees this over melodramatic uh, stuff going on and going well that can't possibly be real but everyone else has lived with that drama <laughs> for all this time and they just figure well that's that's how she is and so they've kind of just, I think, become just used to it. They, they're they're unable to see past it. It's well, you know, that's Rebecca. She's a little dramatic. She is emotional, and this is an emotional moment for her. I mean, if you can believe that in a matter of a few days, over text only, people can create that greater relationship then you can believe that someone is totally shattered when that relationship uh turns out to have been a catfish look look they were they were in love yes what are you gonna are you gonna say no to love david never i would never say no to love yeah. um that's what we have that's that's what we're gonna end the episode on <laughs> um so uh thank you guys for uh for joining us on episode nine uh david there's only three episodes left do you have a winner pick you know i until this episode i was thinking shuby i just don't think that his authenticity is going to carry the day so I'm going to go with Chris because Chris at least seems to have some strategy. You know, I was debating in my mind there between Joey and Chris, but I think Chris is coming up in the world uh, of the circle and he seems to have some strategy. So I think he has a good shot. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Uh, again, trying to figure out 
you know, who the finals uh, are going to consist of and then how those people are going to be doing their rankings. Are they going to be thinking strategically? Are they going to be worried about Shuby and therefore put him lower? Or are they going to feel like, you know what, I'm just going to rate based on who I like the most? Um, I actually, I, I did a Twitch stream yesterday. Uh, I went through and I do feel like we're, we're going to see more genuine rankings than not in the in the finals that's that's kind of the sense i'm getting especially from people like shuby joey um even people like chris and sammy uh i feel like there's uh you know i think gonna be some some fairly genuine voting going on and uh and the three people i had it narrowed down to yesterday i feel like sammy joey or shuby uh have the best chance um but Anything can change based on these right. episodes. Even just this uh, this whole set of rankings, you know, Rebecca being in first, I think it lowers her chances even more. Um, right. And uh, and Shuby being in the top again might really start to lower Shuby's chances, as you talked about. Uh, if Shuby continues to be in the top spot the next two, whatever, or next one, I don't know how many more are left, right. um, then I could see even some of the more genuine people being like, I don't want to just hand it to him. Uh, so that may that may change things. So that's where we're at. Uh, any final thoughts, David, before we sign off here? No, I think, uh, you know, heading to next episode, I think Ed is in the most uh, dangerous position. I think he's going to get the boot uh, yeah. quickly. And then I think the final five are going to be the original five. It seems the most likely outcome at this point, yeah. Well... All right, then. Uh, I'm going to go watch that episode, and then I'll be back, and we'll be talking about episode 10 of The Circle. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us here. Uh, David, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on Twitter, at David Bloomberg. No underscores, no dashes, just at David Bloomberg. And, uh, of course, we'll be uh, gearing up for some uh, Survivor preseason. Yeah, they just uh, released the cast. Yeah, uh, it was such a Officially. surprise. Yeah. yeah. Well, we already knew. Yes, that's true. Um, and uh, I will be with Rob and a couple other people on a roundtable, on the final roundtable uh, on Monday as we talk about the newest winners of the bunch. Ooh. And. And then Jessica Lewis and I will be uh, doing some preseason coverage as we lead up to Winners at War. All right. Uh, you're going to do like a why did they win? Uh, no, I've already <laughs> done that with most of them. Oh, you know? no, there you uh, go. But there's there's some discussions. Uh, you know, we will certainly look at each player and and uh, how they might uh, might do in this particular situation. All but right. Was, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, you can, of course, find me on Twitter at Armstrong Taren. Uh, tune into the next recap, and uh, I'll see you then.